All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Richard White, who is right now in Denver via San Francisco. How are you doing, Richard? Doing great. Yeah, and Richard's the founder and CEO of um, of Fathom, and uh, and Fathom is an app for Zoom that allows you to record and highlight in real time your Zoom meetings, so you can write notes later or or share clips from your calls with colleagues. Uh, okay, so and what we're going to talk about today is exactly this: is how to help remote sales teams work more efficiently. Um, so, um, so, uh, which we get started, what was the original idea? What, where did you have the inspiration for the Fathom app? It actually came from, you know, problems I had being on a bunch of Zoom calls myself, right? I think I, at the beginning of last year, I was on like 300 Zoom calls in the first like six weeks of the year. We we're doing a big, a big push uh, for my last company. And, you know, I, I don't know about you, but like when I try to talk to someone, as soon as I have to like stop to like type up my notes, I like just stop talking. Like my brain does not can't do both at the same time, and so you know we found that that part's pretty stressful. But but probably even more problematically is like even I think I take pretty good notes. Like I would like take my notes, I clean them up afterwards, I put a lot of effort into them, and even I would go back two weeks later and be like, I don't remember the important nuance of this, right? Like oh you know they're not going to buy or they had this objection, but like what did they actually say again? And, and my team had the same problem. And so, you know, I combined that with previously, I ran our sales team at User Voice, my last company. And I, I know that the, like, the number one thing I like struggled with, with our, with our remote sales team was getting them to write good notes, right? Some reps wrote really good notes. Some reps wrote, you know, well, like a transcript. They wrote too many notes. Some wrote like, you know, random words. Mm -hmm. Uh, but even the best notes that I got from my team still left me asking the same question that I was asking myself, which is, gosh, you know, okay, I kind of get what's happening, but what did they actually say? Like, how did they object, right? What, what did they say about our competitor? What was their concern about pricing? What was that technical question? And so, you know, Fathom really was started to solve all those problems because now that we're all on Zoom doing it, we should just be able to record this call and take those snippets of the call and get them to the right people, help us remember, you know, and that way we can just focus on having a conversation and not trying to be, you know, court reporters, stenographers at the same time as we are salespeople. Yeah, no, and absolutely, and I mean it's a challenge uh, face to face or 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 on or virtual is uh, good note taking. It's a skill that you know some people have and some people, you know, struggle with. But to your point is um, not being not being able to really record things at the point of impact. You know when it's happening right. and the nuances is, is definitely it, it definitely a major a major drawback. And I think coupled with that is a lot of salespeople happen to move on to Zoom in the first place. They're already not that, you know, it's already not great for them, particularly if they prefer to be a, a, out and about or face to face. And second off, to be honest, some people have even struggled with putting the cameras on. Right. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think there's been kind of call recording different softwares for a while yeah. and some of them are really expensive, but I think, um, you know, two that I think we're trying to do is one, make it easily accessible for everyone or a free product. But two, as you pointed, as you're saying, like, uh, it's also about knowing what are the parts of this call that are important and noteworthy. And what's what really interesting is now that we have a system, like our the way the app works, is you just click a button on our app when you hear something that's noteworthy. And like our system will kind of flag that part of the call uh, so you can jump back to it because no one wants to rewatch an entire call, right? That's the other problem we've seen, like from a coaching perspective, or if I just want to go back and you know review my call, I don't want to rewatch a 30 minute call I had, right? And we actually found only 15% of calls get flagged as being noteworthy. Which kind of makes sense why we don't want to rewatch it, right? So it's not just so it's partially like these tools are kind of being a, a real time meeting assistant for us, but it has to be able to get us to the right portions of the call and not make us do a bunch more work. Yeah, no, no, absolutely, and I think that is a, a you, that has been a big, big, big challenge as people have gone to sell, um, sell remotely or virtually, and using Zoom is just getting a whole smooth cadence together for how to operate how to operate it uh, because i think so i think at the beginning a lot of people were just kind of okay I, I can't do it this way i'll jump on zoom and i'll just do it the other way instead of saying okay this is a different medium and i have to treat it a little bit differently right yeah i, I think we've all we've all learned a lot in the last 18 months here right like you know we've all got better cameras better lighting better microphones you know we're we're all kind of junior podcasters at this point yeah. 
Yeah. And I think, and I do, uh, you found this as well, but I think as things have gone on, uh, the pros prospective customers on the other side, they're expecting a lot more from a Zoom meeting than maybe they were two years ago. Yeah, I also think there's like a, you know, we, start off, we started to solve this problem for a rep, but we also found that your prospect has the same problem, right? Yeah, and this was happening before COVID where, you know, they're trying to take notes too. They're trying to understand and usually report back to some decision maker that is not going to get on the call with you, what they heard and what was interesting. And so I think everyone's trying to figure out how to get more out of these meetings. And so, you know, we can have less of them. Yeah. So just um, so explain, explain the app a little bit more about and, and how it's easy to integrate this into the natural flow of the meeting that you're having. Sure. Yeah. So like I said, it's a, we're a free app. You kind of download it or you, there's a Zoom app. It's kind of a plug inside of your Zoom. And so when you start the call, uh, Fathom starts recording. Uh, and it, we're actually recording and transcribing the call in real time. And all you have to do is when you hear something, you know, like if I hear a piece of product feedback or if I hear an objection, uh, and we generally ask you to tell us like your sales methodology so we can kind of like customize a set of tags for you. But you kind of change from keeping your hands on the keyboard and typing out notes to just clicking whenever you're hearing something that's important. Uh, and then what's really cool is after the call, we give you instant access to your entire, entire call recording. Um, you know, even Zoom itself often takes like 30 minutes to give you the call recording. And we find, you know, if I'm going to try to replace note taking with this, I need to be able to immediately get access to it after the call, right? Because I want to do my right. post call follow up. I want to get it in my CRM, stuff like that. So we give it to you instantly after the call is over. You can jump back to those moments. You know, maybe I had like a couple objections and, you know, a couple action items. I can immediately jump back to those moments and then I can write up my notes, right? So if I wanted to like take some short of notes, like I can jump back to that part of the call. Oh yeah, I could see the transcript. I remember the section. This is where they talked about this. And so you got to write up your notes and then we'll actually do all the data, the rest of the data entry for you. We will automatically create the meeting in your CRM. We'll put in a, the call summary. We'll put in the links to the clips. So if your boss is looking at this opportunity, they can jump in and see, oh, like, okay, well, Rich said they objected on price. Let me go watch that 30 seconds of them objecting on price. So we'll, we'll get it to your to-do manager. We'll get it to your Slack. We'll get it to your CRM. And so that's the other thing we're trying to do is, you know, take out a lot of the legwork of getting these things all to the right places. Because I feel like after every, you know, every like hour of meetings we're in seems to generate an hour of like follow-up tasks, right? I got to go ask my SE about this technical question. I got to send out the action items. I got to put a load in the CRM. And so that's the other half of the equation what we're trying to do is just get reps focused on the things that are like unique as humans, which is having the conversation, asking the right questions, you know, not all of the administrivia that, that tends to go around with it. Yeah, no, we, we totally agree. And we're big believers in that. That's why we, uh, we introduced our automate our automation workflow engine um i think it was this year or last year i can't remember which but but to your point was to automate get rid of all the routine and rote uh tasks think the low value things and let people focus on where they can create value which is which is in the selling process and, and to your point if you're on zoom and you're trying to either take notes you know tap your notes on your keyboard or write them down it's just it's a constant it's a disjointed, uh, it's a disjointed experience. Yeah. Like we're just bad at multitasking, right? We're not, we're, you know, we're great at having conversations. We're bad at like, you know, switching gears between writers and, and talkers. Yeah. And then obviously, uh, as, as you said, I mean, as a, as a coaching tool, then this is, um, this would be quite important because that's the other part I think where a lot of sales leaders, sales managers are, are struggling right now in how do I coach, how do I manage and coach virtual teams because it's different than the way I used to do it. Right. And I think all, you know, some of this is we're trying to, some of this is making it easy for, you know, no one wants to, you know, I don't want to go back and watch hours of my team's content. I don't have time for that every week, right? So I need to be able to find, oh, what were the critical moments of that call? Go watch that and give targeted feedback. Um, we're also trying to automate some of the coaching things, right? You know, certain platforms have spearheaded metrics like, you know, monologuing for too long or what share of talk time. And the problem with a lot of the platforms that give you those metrics is they don't give you those metrics until after the call is over. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I've talked to a lot of reps who are like, I find this interesting, but it feels like, a report card that I get at the end of the call. And so we've actually built it into the system. So like if I start talking for more than 90 seconds, which I'm kind of doing a lot here, it gives me a little warning and starts saying like, oh, you're on a monologue and just FYI, like maybe you should pause and ask a question. Uh, and every five minutes we tell you like how you're doing talk time wise. So 
we're thinking about more and more, how can we, you know, anything we can do with automation to make it so that the rep has a lot of support in real time to run the best call that they can run. Yeah. And when you get to that stage of where you're you're being able to give that intelligent feedback in real time, you know, automated intelligent feedback is you're starting to create, I mean, you're starting to actually make the virtual meeting and the virtual experience probably for both sides better than perhaps even the face to face one because it's more focused. It's you've got the tools helping you. I mean, you could be in a face to face meeting, right? And you could be you could be monologuing for, for 15 minutes without even <laughs> noticing it, you know? Yeah, and yeah. often that happens with nerves, right? You know, people just talk, talk, talk. Yeah. Yeah. I've actually, I now push people away from in-person meetings. I was like, can we do a Zoom? I'd love to, you know, grab a coffee with you later. But I've learned recently that I'm now kind of like, I've developed this like addiction, right? To like, if I meet with you in person, I tend to drop all the action items on the floor because I'm just not used to having to keep that in my head anymore. Yeah, no, and it's a great it's a, it's a, it's a great point, and and I think again, uh, anything I think that allows you to focus more on the high value activities is a, is a very good thing. Um, what are some of the other what are some of the other as you've been going through this? What are some of the other issues or problems you've seen you know coming up or challenges that people have had with virtual selling? Um, I you know I think a lot of this also is just kind of game of telephone type stuff, right? Where you know, we used to have a sales floor and I can ambiently kind of hear things happening and now I don't have that, right? And so one of the things we, we, we added, people were asking for is like, how do we in real time maybe ship you certain like moments from calls while they're happening? So I can kind of re-get that kind of ambient real-timeness of hearing what my team is saying. Um, I think also, you know, how do I influence folks in other parts of the organization? Right. Like let's say I'm in sales. How do I convince product that, you know, they should that I'm hearing this problem or I'm hearing this competitor come up or et cetera, et cetera. Right. My my last company, we sold to product managers. We sold them feedback software, like track where the top features coming up. And I remember one of the surveys we put out was like, who in the or do you trust the most to give you good feedback? Customer success, customer support, sales, marketing. And you know, it was a bunch of people pretty close together, but sales was way down at the bottom of the list, right? Everyone's right. very skeptical of like the feedback from the, coming from the sales team. But now we can have a thing where it's like, great, you know, I'm not going to try to explain to you what the customer wanted. Here's a 30 second clip of this customer feedback. Let it speak for itself. Uh, and, you know, as someone who's sold products, product managers for 10 years, that, that hack works really well on PMs, right? Like there's something about seeing, a, a user fr struggle or say like, I really need this thing that, that gets totally lost in translation when I said ship them three bullet points of here's what I'm hearing a lot of. Um, yeah. And so I think really enabling teams, like whole companies from engineering and product marketing to have a singular kind of view of the front line. Like everyone wants that view of what's happening in these customer calls. But again, no one's going to watch three hours of your sales calls every week, right? And so getting the right clips to the right people, I think is is huge in terms of just making sure we're all singing from the same song sheet, right? Yeah, no, 100%. And I, and I think there's, a, there's another couple of things in there. Um, having been on both sides, on product development side and on the sales marketing side, uh, I do. Uh, I do always laugh at the, when when I was in product development and sales would come and say, "Oh, we need this. We need this feature or that feature," and you knew right well it was the last customer they or the last prospect right. they had spoken to had asked for something and they didn't have it and they felt that that's how they lost the deal. So what's the next thing? Go over to product development, have that. But it turns out that number one, it probably they didn't need the they didn't need it and nobody else needs it. So that's why uh, you have that constant kind of conflict. So anything yep. that can really represent the customer and inform product development in a way like this, I think is a major step forward and should reduce some of that skepticism. Well, part of the reason you only hear about, I mean, we had the same problem at, at my last commission, right? The only reason I I hear about the squeakiest wheel, I hear about we lost this big deal because it's one feature we never heard of before. I don't hear about the things where we won the deal, but if they came up on 20 different calls because the cost of, of the amount of work it takes for the salesperson to go package that up and take it a product is high, right? Oh, I've got to really care to go be like, on top of all this other work I have to do post-call, I'm going to go take the time to ship this feedback over the product development, right? We have to be able to like lower the friction there uh, to be able to make it so that we get a, like a holistic view of what, what, what we're seeing on the front lines. 
Yeah, and and obviously the other the great advantage is is of of having you know product development or other people listen to the actual voice of the customer as well right. as sec second hand. I think that's always incredibly important because again. Uh, it's great, but not everybody has the time to sit in on sales calls either. Right. So, you know, people from marketing or from product development. So again, right. any anything that can that can shortcut that and give them kind of a nice package of what they need to listen to is a good thing. And where this is actually maybe even more impactful is in, you know, like uh, technical, like technical resources, right? Like, you know, SE or something like that, where, you know, product, you know, needs to look at this feedback and do something a bit, you know, in the next couple of months or a year or something. But, you know, if I've got off a call or demo call or intro call, and there's some technical question that came up that I didn't know the answer to, well, now I got to go spin up this big process to go find the right person and whatnot. And, you know, a lot of times the solution to that is, okay, we have a technical call and we take some technical resources and we put them on the call for 30 minutes. Now, it's unclear whether we needed 30 minutes or an hour of that person. So now we're actually, and we, what's really cool is we've done this a few people in like real time. I can be on a call with the customer. Oh, tech question. I don't know the answer to that. You know what? I'm going to get you an answer to that. I click a button, Fathom. Within about 20 seconds, there's a clip of that question in the Slack channel that my SEs are monitoring. And then they can slap me back the answer. Or they jump on the call. And talking about kind of like surprising your customers, right? Like delighting them of like, oh, hi, I'm Tim. I just saw your question. And the answer is this, right? Like, it, you know, that kind of you know, real-time collaboration with other folks on your team, I think is something that's for the folks who are doing that, it's just like really powerful ways to surprise customers in a sales process, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I think more and more going forward that people uh, are going to embrace not not the concept of team selling as it used to be, where you know, but team selling as in different parts of the organization support helping support sales. And as you said, I mean, even doing that in real time is fantastic because everybody, the customer prime slash prospect benefits, sale person benefits, the SEs benefit if it's a product person, the market, whatever, everybody benefits from right. that extra connection to the customer. Yeah. And the customer's like, if you can, if you can do this, if you can get me answers as quickly while I'm on an intro call with you, gosh, I feel pretty good about like signing up with your, your service going forward, right? Like you, that's, you guys are pretty on it. Exactly. Exactly. You build that, you build that level of trust. So what is, what is the, what is the future hold do you think for the, the, the virtual meeting space and for products like yourselves? I mean, I think that, you know, I, I think we were already trending in the direction of, you know, virtual meetings being the dominant kind of sales modality. But I think, you know, like a lot of things, COVID kind of like brought the future forward a couple of years, right? And so, you know, I think a lot of folks that I've talked to that used to do nothing but in-person meetings were forced to do remote meetings and then found, okay, there is a learning curve and there is kind of a digestion period. But once we got over it, you know, it's 90% as good or maybe it's just as good. But certainly once you factor in, I don't have to put you on a plane and I'm going to put you up in the hotel, it's net positive, right? So I, I certainly think it's here to stay. And, you know, we see a, there's a pretty robust ecosystem of apps like ourselves showing up now to try to make, you know, those meetings even better than what you can do in person. Um, and I think also, you know, the tech's going to get there, right? Like, so we're kind of doing, you know, AI assistance, right? So the, the AI is basically in real time recording and transcribing. And the key thing we do again is like when you click the button and say, This is a tech question or this is a piece of product feedback, we look at that call and figure out, okay, when did John start talking? When did John stop talking? Great. That's probably, you know, that that's the clip that's the tech question we should ship off. But if you look, you know, not too far down the line here, we'll be able to just automatically say, it sounds like John is asking a tech question. It sounds like John just gave you an action item, right? And start doing that automatically. There's a number of systems that try to do that today, but their accuracy is just not quite there. Um, it's probably like 85% correct. But when it comes to things like action items, like I don't trust any system that's 85% correct. It's something that's like kind of the job, right? So, but I think it's going to get there, or at least we'll do it in stages where it'll, you know, it'll get nine out of 10 and you'll still pay attention for the one or twos, but you'll have much more of a lean back experience and the system will kind of take over and, you know, long term, I think there's even opportunities where we can surface things that you don't notice, right? Like I'm busy demoing, right? I'm busy. I'm in a screen share. I'm busy demoing. I mainly see my screen. You know, the, the face of the person I'm talking to is, you know, the size of my thumb in the corner of my screen. <laughs> well, the software could look at that and give you an alert of like, you know, Rich is tuning out, right? Like his face tracking, like everything's saying like, I'm not sure, Rich, you know, like in the same way I'm warning you about monologues, I could be warning you that like you're losing them, right? And so I think there's a lot of 
interesting, fun things we could do there again to help us have more, more accurate, like more productive calls, right? Which is good for everyone. No, no, hundred percent, and and I really think that that's where that's where you know technology can can really help uh, is is in areas like that i think there's been some over promising on by some people uh, there's been a lot of that yeah <laughs> yeah and you know there was the whole uh, you know people like oh ai and AI is going to do everything well it's not really going to do everything but but i think the whole point is here when you have complementary when you're when you're really having uh, technology that complements what the what the best human elements of the experience are i think that's the holy grail yeah and that's where we started from because we looked at a lot of that stuff and said you know a lot of this tech isn't here that isn't there yet right like for example we want to do a lot around tone analysis right not just sentiment analysis of what was said but how it was said right that's so critical i mean back when i was running a sales team that's what i always listened for when i'd watch i did watch a clip or was on a call and some customer said why their you know their objection or pricing concern the way they said that is as important as what they said. Um, but there's just no good data out there to really do that analysis today. In fact, the only like data set we could find to do like kind of to train an AI agent on telling like, you know, is someone excited or positive or concerned was based upon the like TV sitcom friends. So you can imagine what happens when you try to take data based on a the over the top, you know, TV sitcom and apply it to a business meeting. It just doesn't work, right? We don't, it doesn't make sense. Unless, unless someone's really over the top in their in their business conversation, it's not going to work. But you know, I so I think there has been a lot of over promising. I think we're a lot of the apps now like ourselves are getting back more to like what can we do that the tech can do today. And I think we're a few years away from the really cool stuff being able to happen. Yeah, no, I totally agree. And I think coming back to um, what can it do to support and and really you know help uh, allow the salesperson to really focus on the high value on the relationship on the things that 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 humans and that well right now humans are the only ones who <laughs> right that we're good at yeah yeah that we're good at yeah um well listen this has been fantastic uh, richard uh, before we go all of richard's information is going to be below this video anyway but before we go please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and fathom yeah if you want to check out fathom again we're a free app but definitely go sign up fathom.video slash pod Maybe about 80,000 people on the wait list right now. But if you go through that link, you will skip to the front of that line and shouldn't get wasted at all. Um, yeah, my background is, is you know, I'm originally an engineer turned designer turned, you know, jack of all trades. Uh, but I'm, you can find me on LinkedIn. Uh, I'm on Twitter, but mainly on LinkedIn. So if anyone, you know, wants to talk about any of these topics more, feel free to reach out to me and ping me there. Yeah, listen, uh, fantastic. Thanks again, Richard. And thank you all for watching and listening. And I'll see you all again real soon. Thank you. Mm -hmm.